In this episode, I'll talk about the importance of knowing why you're doing an exercise. And this will apply to the most basic or advanced exercises. When you don't know why you're doing an exercise, you can really miss golden training moments. So here we go, episode 180, the intention of the exercise, part one. Hi, I'm Karen Rolfe, and welcome to Horse Training in Harmony. This podcast is about you making progress with your horse in a way that you both can love. It's about learning how to move and be in harmony because yes, you really can develop a horse to be both athletic and happy. When we show up as our best selves for our horses, our horses will show up for us. So let's get started. The other day I was giving a lesson to a student who does dressage and also dressage naturally. And she came to learn some of the quote, weird stuff that I do. (laughs) And that's her words, but I get it. It's the stuff that you can't get from, you know, other dressage trainers. So we played with some really simple exercises that would build her horse's confidence with things that she wasn't super confident with. And so by picking something that has that feature to it, it, it's not just about that exercise, but it's about helping her horse move through the process of going from not confident, not sure what to do, to, oh, I have an idea. Can we do this? And that can be super valuable. So uh, the two things I chose would be um, number one, to have her horse's foot go in a rubber feed tub. And the other one was to back in between two barrels. So these are both super simple. And in that simplicity, it gives a great opportunity to look at things like timing and pressure release and reward and dwell time and um, reading the horse's tension level versus the curiosity and confidence level to look at her body language and the person's body language. So I love doing simple things with obstacles because it's so measurable and it's not physically demanding and there's so much stuff going on and what you can learn during exercises like this, uh, you can, you know, just going to build your skills. Your your timing, your communication is, you know, what you learn from doing simple little things like having your horse's foot go in a rubber feed tub. You can definitely use um, for other situations of learning also. So we decided, well, I decided <laughs> to start with the rubber tub. Now, this horse was not super scared or terrified of it, but she was snorting at it a bit. And she uh, was definitely, the horse was preferring to avoid it, right? She was wanting to look away, wanting to move away. She's kind of like, yeah, I see a thing over there. Okay, let's go do something else. Uh, So we were able to, you know, take that starting point and think, all right, well, how, you know, what could we do to have um, the horse end up with their foot in it. Now, I I think I just want to say a little bit here also, um, things like this I often will refer to as, you know, silly horse tricks. And in the video classroom, there's a bunch of videos with different silly horse tricks. So as you're um, hearing about this, you can look in the video classroom for more. There's also videos on the things I'm mentioning in the Habits for Excellent Horsemanship course. Uh, So you can see a process with that if you want to see some visuals of it. Okay, so there we are with the horse, the tub, (laughs) and how do we approach this? So we talked about how to uh, leave the horse alone if she was looking at it or thinking towards it. And if she wasn't, if she was trying to walk away or look away, Uh, then we would just kind of ask her small, easy questions, you know, like, oh, hey, come back this way, or, oh, you know, don't go over there. (laughs) And to do only enough to get her attention back towards the tub. So anytime she was focusing on looking at the tub, we're just, you know, taking all the pressure off. Now with things like this, it's usually less about 
asking them, like, what's the cue, right? A lot of people say, well, what's the cue for, for them to put their foot in the tub? Um, it's, I don't really think about the cue for that. I just sort of have the idea in the picture in my head. And it's more really about just keeping them focused on it and just seeing, hey, it's something about this tub thing. Um, I find that if I can keep them focused on it, the horses tend to be so naturally curious that a majority of the horses will end up investigating it with their nose and then eventually with their feet. And then I can just sort of reinforce that behavior through praise or a verbal bridge, you know, tongue click or clicker if you use that. I just say good, (laughs) or a well-timed release of pressure. But for things like this also, it's a moment where I find that having some sort of verbal bridge um, where I can mark the moment that they're doing something that I'm thinking of, because often in these cases, I'm actually not applying any pressure in the first place to have something to release from, right? So I'm saying, hey, focus over here around this tub thing. And then I just sit there and wait. So if I'm already waiting and released and then they touch it, you know, how how much more released can I get? So then I find I'm a little bit, if I don't have a way to say, good, yes, warmer, warmer, warmer. (laughs) If I don't have a way to let them know like, hey, yeah, more of that in that direction, then I'm just, it can be a a frustrating thing. I mean, again, some horses' natural curiosity will be so satisfying that they're going to end up wanting to play with it. So that's how it can work, even if you don't have a way to say yes. (laughs) But I find it super helpful to have something in addition to pressure and release for situations like this, where I might already be released. Okay, so I'm um, just presenting something for them to focus on and mostly waiting, ready to kind of redirect if they wander off with their attention or their feet. But if they're calm and they're not offering ideas, or maybe they're just standing there like, I don't know what you want me to do, then I might more explicitly direct them forward to step forward, whether it's just leading them or drawing them towards me. It's usually for this situation, I'll usually be on the other side of the tub and I'll draw them towards me, but not always. Sometimes I'm sending them to the tub. Um, But you can explicitly direct them to step forward and straight into the bucket by, you know, hey, come this way. (laughs) And the bucket is in the way. (laughs) That's how the foot ends up in there. Um, But even then, I'm actually not really doing much. I still am not maybe having like a cue for pick up your foot, then move it forward, then put it down. I find if they're just kind of aligned with it and they're thinking forward to it, and if they start to pick up their foot, there's a really good chance it's going to end up coming down in or on or near or touching the tub. So again, mostly I'm waiting. The The invitation is, I think, quite subtle as far as body language or a cue or something. So this is where I really need to think about the intention of the exercise, because the intention is what's informing what I just talked about, like how I'm asking. So raise your hand if you think the intention of the exercise is to get the horse's foot in the tub. Okay, now if you actually raise your hand, take that hand and give yourself a nice little pet on the back for being a refreshingly silly person because you know I can't see you. (laughs) And if you did not raise your hand, good for you for not just blindly doing anything I suggest. I'm not ready for that kind of power, everyone. (laughs) Anyway, okay, so the intention of the exercise was not to get the horse's foot in the tub. That is the horse's foot in the tub is sort of in the back of my mind as a side effect of what the intention was. The intention was to have the horse confident enough and curious enough to decide to put their foot in the tub. And I know that might be a little semantics, a little, you know, just difference in wording, maybe, maybe not. But 
became a very important part of this lesson for the person I was coaching. Okay, Noel, you know who you are. You probably recognize yourself in this story by now. So I realized that most of the advice that I was giving her in this lesson was around this point that the intention was not get the horse's foot in the bucket. The intention was cause the horse to decide to put their foot in the bucket. All right, so we're still training, we're still making decisions, but it was less about how to ask, you know, and where to direct the pressure and what the body language should be. And it was more about when to wait, how long to wait, and how to just invite while maybe closing some other doors to eliminate some options. But it's all, it was pretty subtle. So the invitation was more about holding the idea of it, right? We had this idea of the horse with standing confidently in the bucket and with a feeling, uh, an expression of pride because they're like, look at me, I put my foot in the bucket. And that's how my horses look when they often, when they put their foot in the bucket, they're like, look at me, I'm in the tub. I I totally am rocking the tub. So, so again, holding the idea of it, bringing the, the horse's attention in that direction and then taking the time it takes for the horse to you know, for the horse's mind. Okay, Harper, you know who you are. (laughs) Harper, if you're listening, and there's a good chance that Noel is playing this for her horse, Harper, you know who you are. Anyway, so we took the time it took for the horse's mind to go through a whole process, a process that started with the horse, all right, I'm guessing, but thinking something like, what is that? And then it moved to okay, it's a thing that's not too bad, but not sure what it has to do with me. Hey, look over there. (laughs) Then it goes to like, oh my God, I touched it. Can we go now? Then it went to like, hmm, I guess I'm meant to stay here. So I may as well investigate this really weird thing. Then it went to, oh, it's a squishy tub. Oh, it's okay. So then maybe something like, why is everyone staring at this tub thing? And then maybe it went to, look, I can put my whole neck right over the top of it. (laughs) Then maybe, I think I want to paw at it, but I'm kind of not sure. Then maybe to, oh my God, my foot touched it. Can we go now? (laughs) Then maybe, okay, I'm going to walk around the tub. Then to, oh my God, my foot touched it and it moved, but I'm still okay. Then maybe to, check me out. I can sniff the tub while holding my foot up over it. Then to, oh, I can walk up and touch it with my foot. It ain't no thing. And, and that was, that was, uh, (laughs) my reenactment of our success for that day. Right. So we left it at somewhere, something around, oh, I can walk up and touch it with my foot. And that's not so bad. And that's where we left it because that's progress because we knew the intention was not to get the horse's foot in the tub. The intention was for the horse to feel like she wanted to put her foot in the tub. So we had success because we clearly were heading in that direction. And this became, again, the one of the most important themes of the lesson. So at no time did I have the intention, get the horse's foot in the bucket. In fact, we did techniques to, if we did techniques to make that happen, it might very well have taken longer, right? So if the horse was in the like, can we go now stage? And we're going, no, you need to get in the bucket. um, It it might have made it, created more anxiety and then taken longer. Or maybe if we were really fancy with closing our doors and only leaving one door open and putting a little pressure everywhere outside the bucket so that she was more inclined to get in the bucket, but when she got in the bucket, she still wasn't okay with it. Maybe we got her in the bucket, but it might have been worse the next time because she got into the bucket through uh, an anxious moment, an association of anxiety with the bucket. And you know, 
I have to say, we could have put too much pressure on, closed all the doors, put pressure everywhere, spit the bucket, everywhere else but the bucket, made it happen. Through fear and anxiety, she got in the bucket, baby got more anxious, we outmaneuvered her, got her in there, and then let her stand there for a long time. And maybe she would have been, she the next day she would have like walked over and put her foot in the bucket because horses are kind of amazing that way. However, there's <laughs> there's nothing so wonderful as facilitating a situation where the horse actually has time to become truly confident and curious and to watch them decide to have a great idea and act on it. And then it's just really cool if what just happened happened to be what we hoped would happen in the first place. (laughs) And then we can smile with pride and the horse gets to feel like they won the game. So we took a break from that, let her process for a minute and then move to the barrels. All right, so the, the idea with the barrels is there's two barrels, a little bit more than a horse width <laughs> between them so a horse can fit and walk in between them. And the picture is the horse is standing there. I'm standing however far away in front of the horse. I can call the horse by name horse comes to me and then backs up between the barrels. And this is a really fun, simple exercise. There's different parts to it. And uh, it's, but when they get it, it's really cool. You can like amaze your friends because horses can get really good at this and they can go like across the arena backing up and maneuver to get in between the barrels. And again, I have, this is, um, especially this one is in the Habits for Excellent Horsemanship course. Um, here, you can have a coupon, save 100. If you enter that in the horsemanship course and uh, you can save a hundred dollars, dressagenaturally.net slash habits. Okay. Anyway, uh, a little extra advertisement in there, but this is where you'll see it. Okay. So, um, when it, the way you start the exercise, so that was the final picture, but how you start it or how. I like to start it, is to lead the horse between the barrels or send them between the barrels and make sure that they can stop and hang out there and feel like it's a a happy place, right? So you want the between the barrels to be this nice relaxed place and where they can dwell and hang out. It's a place to, you know, nothing happens there. A lot of horses can be kind of claustrophobic. The barrels are kind of right there by their belly. It's hard to see them. It's a tight space. Sometimes if they, you know, if they're light barrels, they'll move around a little bit. Um, You can use other markers too, but I like barrels because of the height of them. Um, You really find out if your horse is claustrophobic. And so number one is that they can stay there. And then what I'll do is ask them to take one step forward and then take the step right away back again. So the rhythm of the exercise is stand still, step forward, step back, stand still, rest. One step forward, one step back, rest. And then when that works, you go, can I take two steps forward, two steps back, rest, hang out. Thank you. Wonderful. Try it again. Two steps forward, two steps back, rest. And you'll find with each horse, (laughs) there's a critical moment. Like some horses, if they take one step forward, they're gone. Like they'll stand there between the barrels, but you let start them taking a step and they're like, whoo, good, I get to go and they're out of there. Um, So taking that one step forward, one step back is a really, really, really cool exercise. Great for timing, equalizing your back up and your forward. Um, But then the next critical threshold is when when their hind end clears the the barrels because that's when if they're inclined to um, swing sideways or something and then you can't get them between the barrels again because the point is not to get them between the barrels the point is that they are trying to help get between the barrels because they want to be between the barrels okay so hopefully that's a picture so we had Noel sent um, Harper (laughs) between the barrels and Harper would go through, then she's like, okay, I'm going to go through, but a little bit of a scoot through. I mean, not nothing bad, but just definitely like, okay, I'm going through the barrels and out the other side. And so the 
it was a little tricky to have her stop. Now, I'll ask the horse to stop because they don't know the exercise, so how are they supposed to know that? So I lead them through, hope, that's about all I'll do. Hope, whatever my cue for stop is, I say it once, and if they tell me like, no, I'm not okay here, then I'll go, okay, that's fine, you can leave. So this is um, part, it's hard for me to not, I didn't mean to get into the nitty gritty of the technique, but it's hard for me not to. If the horse is unafraid and just walking through and you told them to stop and they're like, yeah, nah, don't feel like it, then you can like, hey, I said stop. (laughs) Hey, stop me and stop, right? But if the horse is going, oh, I'm not okay here, allow them to go because the intention is that she feels safe between the barrels, that the barrels are a happy little resting place. That's the intention. And because of it's a happy little resting place, the the backup is easier because they're trying to get that back there anyway, right? So if the horse says, I'm not okay between the barrels, making them stay between the barrels doesn't fit that intention. They're not gonna become okay because we forced them there. They're gonna become okay when they're okay. And one of the ways they're gonna become okay is if they know they're not trapped there, right? If they know they're not trapped, they know they can leave, then we're gonna know for sure when they are okay. Because when they're okay, they won't be trying to leave anymore. But we have to know that that's the intention. The intention is that they're okay there, not that we can physically make our horse stand between the barrels no matter what. And so Noel had this reflex. I noticed at one point she actually stood in front because she had kind of been sending her through the barrels. And then Noel put herself right in front and like tried to physically block her um, with her body. And um, I said, you know, after pointing out that's not really a great idea from a safety standpoint. I mean, this horse, it kind of worked, but it's not a good reflex to have if you're doing that with some other horse who's trying to scoot out because if it's bad enough, they'll you know, run you over. Again, you don't want to block them. You want to say, oh, you're not okay. Great. Then you should leave. I don't want you to stand there if you're not okay with being there. And this is where it became really clear to me that I had to really emphasize this because I think, um, I don't remember exactly what Noel said, but something, something like, oh, but I'm being unsuccessful because there were so many times when when Harper just wouldn't stop and just kind of, you know, was clearly like, I I need to be out of here. And so I was like, oh, but wait, what's the intention of the exercise? So this is what just brought me to the front of my mind, the importance of when teaching an exercise that I make sure that I'm super clear about sharing the intention of the exercise, right? So Noel was just trying to be successful doing the task And in my mind, I was like, we have all the time in the world because I knew the intention. So um, that's why I'm emphasizing it here again with you guys, because I think this comes up a lot. And it's a question as a student that you might have um, for your instructors. There might be times when, you know, there's an exercise you're doing, but I think it's a great question of like, hey, but what's the intention? Is the intention that, you know, have your instructor think a little bit and describe what the intention is, because you can see how it affects the decision points. So um, again, the intention is not Noel gets her horse to stand between the barrels. It is Noel shows her horse that between the barrels is a safe place of rest and cookies. So that's the basis of the exercise. Without that, every time, every time, you know, you they walk forward, the horse is going to be thinking, whew, I'm glad I'm not there anymore. (laughs) And then when you try to do the part where you're walking forward and then backing them up again, you know, if they're thinking, whew, I'm glad I'm not there anymore. And now you're going to have to back between them. That's going to make that part of the exercise much harder, if not impossible. (laughs) But if your horse is seeing the barrels as a safe place of rest and cookies, they start to eagerly go back between them. And then the exercise becomes really fun because then it's about um, 
you know, how long will they wait for you there? Can you draw forward immediately? Can you back them up and redirect them if they back a little crooked? Are you able to stop, have them yield a body part over so they're aligned again? Can you equalize the forward and the back? Now that's the fun you know, fun part of it. Can you increase the distance? You know, can you go 20 meters out from the barrels and then back up between them again without bumping into them? (laughs) So once I reiterated the intention and the intention was our horse was okay between the barrels, then everything that you did that moved you towards that intention was a success, right? So every time her horse said, I'm not okay between the barrels, and Noel said, that's okay, you can leave. I'm not gonna trap you there. That's success. That's absolutely success. You know, if your horse goes between the barrels and then you like quick build a box around them so they can't leave, like that's not meeting the intention that we want the horse to be okay, because how are we gonna know if the horse just checks out and stands there? Right, so being forced to stay somewhere you're scared is not a good way to let the horse know that it's a safe place of rest and cookies. <laughs> and again, like I said earlier, some horses are a, are amazing because you can trap them there and you can tell them that leaving is not an option and some horses will just resolve. They'll be like, okay. And they'll maybe check out a little bit and they'll just do it and they'll seem fine and sometimes that horse will be worse the next time and some horses will just seem even more fine they'll just do it because horses are amazing however it's a whole different feeling and it's a whole different relationship to try to do it this way with that intention anyway so I guess this podcast is a little bit about two things. It's a little bit about, in general, knowing the intention, and these are just examples, but it's also turning out to be a lot about the examples and the difference between making and having your horse willingly offer. So there's a huge difference between making your horse do something and causing yours to be curious and engaged enough to try offering the thing you wanted because you set it up to happen and you invited it to happen. And that's why these simple games are really fun to watch them go through that process of trusting and building confidence and curiosity and asking questions and, hey, what am I supposed to do? Great question, horse. (laughs) And so they end up experimenting and doing things in a way so that in the end they do the thing and in very real ways it was their idea and you just guided them warmer colder yes no and it helps them to learn to think in positive ways right so you know how's a horse supposed to think in our crazy human world well there's going to be these little puzzles and to realize like, oh, here's a puzzle. Okay, she's wanting me focused over here and this thing over here isn't as much an option, but here's some open doors. You know, now I'm gonna start thinking and figuring it out. So it's, again, it's not, it's a little bit about, I'm getting my horse to put the foot in the tub, but it's a lot about moving through that process, learning to think, learning to trust, learning to experiment, learning to try some things and try other things and that and that they're experimenting and they're trying to do things as long as they're thinking towards in the in the direction basic general direction we're thinking of like that's that's how I want my bra- my horse's brains to work I want them to go through that process and not just resolve and let me put their bodies where I told them to put it that's for me <laughs> it it also doing it in this way sort of allows this full wave, the wave from relaxation to the, I'll say the tension of the puzzle, right? There's like, huh, there's something happening here and I don't seem to have found the answer yet, but I'm going to keep trying. Back to relax, the relaxation of, oh, I did it. And in that case, the desired action, the thing that you were hoping that they would do happens in the moment of the relaxation. It, it happens in the moment of going, 
I'm going to do that thing. I'm I'm going to I'm going to put my foot in there. So there's a there's a release of the tension of the puzzle. It's a it's a moment more towards relaxation rather than a moment of I'm I'm creating pressure everywhere and because of that pressure now I'm acting. So we need a you know there's there's moments we close some doors but we are very conscious about what doors we close. The doors we closed were when they were sort of not thinking in the right direction. We opened the door when they went, ah, I'm not okay. (laughs) So remember to set the intention of the exercise or your time with your horse, as well as the goal. The goal will tell you what to do. The intention will affect your decisions. Intention will inform you about how to do it and what to count as success along the way. So many people focus on the goal. The horse does this thing. But pressure to accomplish that can actually cause it to be less successful. So knowing why you're doing it will give you the feel to adapt as you go along. Now next week, I'll talk about the importance of knowing the intention of the exercise in more dressage-like situations. 